Hello, welcome back to NorCal 715. Well, people give me stuff and immediately I want to tear it apart, see what's inside it, and see how it works. Anyhow, I've got this uh, battery operated uh, little floodlight. It's got a bunch of individual LEDs in it instead of a uh, cob chip on board. It also has a I'm ready to get pulled over by impersonating the police function on it. It goes through a couple little uh, routines here. Also, it will allow you to run the red blue flashers and the standard uh, LEDs simultaneously. No questions asked. So, let's see what they're doing inside here. Let's tear it apart. First, I'm going to take it off of the uh, little stand it's on. Might be a little easier to deal with at that point. Uh, absolutely no model name, no manufacturer, no model number anywhere on here. Kind of almost what I would expect to see in there. Looks like three 18650 batteries and a small circuit board. I doubt we'll be able to get the batteries out there. Well, maybe they're glued in place. I don't want to pry on them too terribly hard. But let's take out the circuit board and uh, see what it's all about. Yeah, there's certainly not too terribly much to it. Let's see if I can get focused on the circuit board a little bit better. Looks like a uh, single little uh, regulator of some type over here. This is probably uh, one of the output drivers it looks like for possibly one of the colored lights. One thing I'm not seeing on this board anywhere is any kind of a charge controller whatsoever. So I imagine it's got to be in the battery because as I look at these two little uh, power input coaxial jacks here, uh, the battery actually connects directly to those jacks, nowhere else. So it's got to have the, uh, the charge current limiter and the discharge limiter all in that battery as one piece. So maybe I will try to get that battery out of there. I think it's only actually held in with this one little piece of silicone here. I think I can just slice through it pretty easily without doing any damage. And then we'll see if I can feel a circuit board in there somewhere. Really hard to tell. I just can't imagine that they would just be feeding the power right into the battery. Let's just try to open this very gently over here. Ah, I see something in a tube. That's a good sign. Now this shrink is quite substantial. 
Uh, I definitely feel some components in here. So it's probably got a DWL1 in there and a couple of uh, FETs, a uh, maximum charge and a maximum discharge controller is the DWL1 and then the two FETs will allow uh, to conduct or not conduct to either charge or discharge. So by the looks of things, all three of these batteries are in parallel, so there's no balancing circuit whatsoever in here. Uh, they just use a maximum charge discharge. So they're probably 2,000 milliamp hours a piece thereabouts. I see no numbers on them whatsoever. So that would be a, a six amp hour battery pack, 3.7 volts. And so it's gonna go through here and go into this little uh, buck converter or boost converter, I'm sorry, to raise that up enough to drive these uh, LEDs. Let me get back in focus here. So the uh, battery is just gonna come right onto the board here and it's gonna go into this little boost converter with this coil and a diode and that's gonna raise the voltage enough to drive these LEDs. So speaking of driving these LEDs, let's just go ahead and we'll turn the light on. Let's turn it on high and uh, we'll kinda try to measure some battery voltages over here and see where we're at. Looks like quite possibly the red is gonna be the common and then the uh, blue and the two yellows coming back are gonna be the returns from the different LEDs. So let's try to get uh, zoomed out just a little bit here. And I think I'm gonna turn everything around, make it easier to see. That way we can get a meter on here. We can go to voltage. All right, so let's just take a look between here, 3.2 volts, 0.4, and 0.02. So obviously they're not, they may not be even doing any buck or boost converting. They may just be sending it right into the battery or right into the LEDs, I'm sorry. So that should be low power right there. Two point five volts. Let's go to AC and see if there's any AC component. Not too much. Uh, for the heck of it, let's hit frequency and see if they're modulating these. And they are modulating these at seven point eight kilohertz. So that's off. There's low. There's high. So we're still modulating these things. Oops, looks like it came off. Yeah, we're still modulating those even in the uh, high position. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on the uh, little, I want to get arrested red and blue flashers to imitate the police. So once again, we'll go from the positive and we'll go over here and just see if we get some random pulses. Let's go ahead and lift it up just a little bit so that you can see the colors as they're coming out from underneath there and see if it corresponds to the voltmeter. And it certainly does. So that looks like that's the red and number two is probably the blue. I can't really tell if they're feeding this a uh, pulse. I only have an analog oscilloscope and it's a lot of work to drag it out just to see what's going on. But let's go ahead and uh, we'll interrupt uh, the red common lead and we'll put this uh, meter in the amp range and see what kind of current they're feeding those LEDs. Turn that guy off there. I know what that is now. It just came to me. That is a boost converter to convert, convert the 3.7 volt battery up to USB voltage, 5 volts. So that's what's going on right there. They're using that 45 microhenry coil, uh, that diode SS24 and that little uh, transistor or it's probably a little IC built-in oscillator and everything all built into one package. And so, yeah, what they're doing is they're driving these FETs for either high or low power on this one, and then these are the two for the red and the blue uh, outputs. So, yeah, let's go ahead and break the circuit 
and uh, see what kind of current we're looking at here. Okay, so I'm just going to start and unsolder the uh, common lead. I'm going to go ahead and tack a little test lead in place here. That's on there good. All right, I'm just going to put a couple pincher probes on the leads here. Okay, I've got my leads in place. Got my uh, voltmeter in the amp mode. So there we go to low power, 250 milliamps. High power is about 840, 850. Eight twenty, kind of diving down a little bit. Might be doing some current limiting going on there. So with a fully charged battery at eight thousand milliamp hour, you could expect to get probably eight to nine hours of light at a high, and on low, uh, possibly up to thirty hours of light before the battery would uh, start going south on you. Let's uh, take a look at the uh, police light current. So let's just go to min-max. Let me just look at the average, 70 milliamps. So this is a running average taking into account the on and the off time. You can see this flashing, quick flashing, the current's actually going down a little bit. Staying pretty steady at the alternate flashing. And then when they both start flashing together, the current's going to be going up. So about 80, 80, 85 milliamps average draw current. That's a lot of hours to equal 8,000. So 10 hours would be 800 milliamp hours. So 100 hours of emergency flashing light would be available through this. So we'll go back to look at the average here on bright. So we're looking at 820 milliamps approximately. So let's take a look and see how many LEDs there are. Since obviously they're feeding each LED in parallel. So they're not series or anything like that. We can get an idea of exactly how much each LED draws at that point. All right, so I'll very carefully try to turn this over. Wow, it's awfully bright. So it looks like we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five rows times four, so 20 LEDs total. And so we came up with 850 milliamps into those 20 LEDs. So that would be an average current of about 41 and a half milliamps into each LED. So they could conceivably generate a little bit of heat. Let's go ahead and pull the front of this off too and take a look at the reflector, which I honestly don't think is doing a bit of good in here. I think it's there for looks more than anything because the LEDs primarily emit light in the forward direction. Almost no light's emitted to the sides whatsoever, so that reflector is kind of a just a show piece, just to get you to buy the product. actual piece of glass, so that's kind of nice. It's just a little reflector, nothing special. Plastic injecting molding, and then just chrome plated. And so I do see a couple resistors, and those appear to be current limiting exclusively for the red and the blue LEDs. So let's take a resistance measurement here. 
6.4 ohms and 3.1 ohms. Uh, different color LEDs require a different voltage to drive, so that's what's going on. Just for the heck of it, if we can, let's see, I don't want that one. We'll turn these on high. Whoa, incredibly bright. Got volts, so I'm on the right scale here. Hard to see, but 2.818 volts. 2.8 volts. Turn that off. Wow. I definitely got spots in my eyes now. Overall, it looks like a pretty well designed. Uh, it looks like this is just glued down. There's no, no fasteners holding it to the board whatsoever. It is on a heat sink, which is a very good thing. And they thoughtfully allow the heat sink to travel all the way through. So the air can pass through it easily and use convection cooling to cool those LEDs if they've been on for many hours. So just for the fun of it, I'm going to cut a little piece of cardboard and lay it over the top of the LEDs. And then put the reflector back on it and see how much light actually is scattered to the sides. Probably not much. Okay, so I've got a little piece of cardboard and I'm just holding it right on top. And as you can see, almost no light other than what's reflected off the cardboard is reflected on the reflector whatsoever. Because I've got the camera almost perfectly straight above it. Back to fun little test. I'll just point it down here and move the reflector in and out of the way. I don't really see any difference in the brightness. In fact, let me change modes and go a fixed exposure with the camera. Okay, so I've got it on a fixed exposure, so there'll be no exposure compensation at this point. So that's with the reflector in place, and that's without the reflector. Maybe a slight change, ever so slightly, but not really as far as I can see anything at all. So here's the charger for this little light. Let me go ahead and plug it in here. I've got it on watts right now. As soon as you plug it in, the light turns red to indicate that it's charging, and it shows it's drawn about uh, two watts, not too terribly much. Now the spec on this thing, see if I can zoom in, you can see it a little bit. Uh, lithium ion adapter. 100 to 240 volts input at 100 milliamps. Output 4.2 volts at 500 milliamps. Now the way you know that this thing is actually doing its job is the little light is red during charge and when it becomes fully charged it turns not green but kind of an amber color, a mix of red and green together. So let's take a look at this thing in uh, wow, terrible power factor, 0.43. That is really bad, so they're not doing any kind of any kind of filtering to try to get the uh, the current in phase with the power whatsoever. But it draws such a little amount of current. Why would they waste their time on two watts, 4.7 VA? You can tell how bad the power factor is. Well, there it is. I'll put back together now and turn the power onto it. Low, high and the impersonating the police officer uh, lights. Anyhow, I certainly hope you enjoyed this teardown and analysis of this little portable floodlight. Very lightweight, very nice device. Probably gonna provide a, a few years of use as long as it doesn't get abused. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button, or simply go to PayPal dot me slash norcal715 with your help we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin everybody have a great day thanks for watching bye bye